All right, here we go. The first thing we're going to talk about today are leases. And what a lease involves is typically using some sort of property for a set period of time. Um, that could be a car, maybe it's an apartment or a condo or a house, or maybe it's an office space, something where you enter into an agreement to make payments um, so that you can use some form of property over a period of time. There are four components to a lease that we want to make sure we consider when we figure out the total cost. The first of those is the upfront payment. Do you have to make a payment at the beginning to sort of get the lease started? And then a monthly payment. Is there a payment every month as you're using that property? Are you paying for it on a monthly basis? Typically, yes. How long is the lease? Uh, two years, three years, five years, kind of depends on what the property might be. And, you know, these two kind of go together because we're going to be making a monthly payment for a certain amount of time. And then finally, there could be additional charges associated with the lease. Maybe there's not, but there could be. And these can be associated with a car. It might be you're limited to a certain number of miles. And if you go over that, then you have to pay extra. Or if it's an office space, maybe there's a cleaning fee. And when you get to the end of the time of using the office space or something along those lines. So these are the components of the lease that we're going to consider when we go to figure out the total cost. Let's go ahead and take a look at one. Josie leases a space to use as an office by paying $400 up front and $275 a month for three years. What is the total cost of this lease? As is the case with anything in this whole chapter on consumer math, we always want to be careful to answer the question that's being asked. And here the question that's being asked is, what is the total cost? So that's what we're trying to find. In finding that total cost, we're going to go through every one of those components. We're going to see, OK, what was the upfront cost? What is the monthly cost? What is the length of this lease? And then are there any other additional costs? All right, let's get that all outlined over here and we'll see. Josie leases a space to use an office by paying $400 up front. So up front costs, $400. And she's gonna pay 275 per month. So her monthly cost is $275. And the length of this lease is three years. What is the total cost of this lease? So no other additional costs are mentioned, so there's not going to be any additional costs here. It's just the upfront, the monthly, and how long it is. Now the length of the lease, what really matters there isn't so much the three years as is how many times is Josie going to make this payment? She's going to make this payment monthly for three years. So how many payments is she really going to make? Thirty-six. I'm guessing that was a typo, Ashley. But but um, if not, you let me know. But she's going to okay three years, and she's going to do that twelve times every year. So there's going to be 36 months involved. So she's going to make that payment 36 times. <laughs> All right. So the idea that it's three years is important, but what we really care about is how many times is she going to make the payment? And over the course of three years, there's going to be 36 months. So she's going to make that payment 36 times. And now we can find our total cost. Our total cost of the lease is going to be, well, the $400 she pays up front plus that $275 that she's going to pay 36 times. And so we need to just multiply 275 times 36, add that to the 400, and we'll have the total amount. Don't forget about order of operations here. You can see we have addition and multiplication, so we'll multiply first. So the first thing we'll do is we'll multiply 275 times 36.
and get 9,900. We'll add that to the $400 upfront cost. And the total cost of this lease then is $10,300. Basically, we had to consider all four components to figure out the total cost. Are there any questions about what we did there in finding the total cost of that lease? Excellent. All right. Let's look at something similar, but a little bit different. Justin leases a car by paying $1,000 up front and $199 a month for four years. The lease states that mileage above 40,000 will be charged at 20 cents per mile. If he drives 41,300 miles, what is the total cost of this lease? So here again, just like the last one, just like everything in chapter two, we want to make sure we're answering the question that's being asked, which is what is the total cost of the lease? If I'm being asked for the total cost of the lease, I know that I'm just going to consider these things. The upfront cost, how much is it every month? How long is the lease? And are there any additional charges? Okay, let's go back through the question and get all the information we need here. So he paid $1,000 up front, $199 a month for four years. And you know the years isn't gonna be the important number here. We're going to figure out how many months because he's making that payment monthly. But just to sort of keep going here, are there additional charges? Now, we didn't have those last time when Josie did the office space, but here with Justin leasing this car, it looks like we're going to have additional charges because what happened was he was allowed to drive 40,000 miles, but he drove 41,300. So he is going to have to pay for those additional miles. We're gonna have to subtract 41,300 minus 40,000 to find out that he has, let's see, 41,300 minus 40,000. He's got 1,300 miles that he needs to pay for. So we do have additional charges here that we didn't have before. All right, well, let's see what those are gonna be then. Let's see, 1,300 miles, and we're told that that's going to be 20 cents per mile. Don't write this down, just watch it. So let's see, I've got 1,300 miles times 20 cents per mile. I'll multiply those together, and I get 26,000. Wow, $26,000? That What did I do wrong there? because there's no way it's $26,000 for those extra miles. What, what mistake did I make? Very good, Ashley, very good, Kevin. You're both exactly right. The way that I wrote this down, I wrote it as $20 per mile, and that's certainly not right. So be careful there. Just because there's a 20 in the problem, make sure you're careful. If it's 20 cents, then we want to make sure we're multiplying by 20 cents, not $20. And when I do that, now I get 1,300 times 0 0.2, $260. Okay, that seems way more reasonable. So Justin's going to have to pay an additional $260 for the extra miles he drove. We'll need to keep that in mind. The other part of the question goes just like the last one with Josie renting the place. We're gonna look at this and say, okay, well, four years times 12 months in a year, so that's gonna be 48 months. So when we go to find the total cost of this lease, let's see, Justin paid $1,000 up front, and then he paid $199 a month for 48 months, and then we don't want to forget about these $260 in additional charges down here. So we'll add that $260. And that's going to give us the total cost. 
as we look at this, we can see we have adding, multiplying, and adding. We better multiply first. Order of operations tells us to multiply first. And so when we do that, we'll have 1,000 plus 199 times 48. 9,552 plus 260. And then we just add all those together. And it's $10,812 is the total cost of the lease. When we want to find out the total cost of the lease, we look at these four components. There may or may not be additional charges. If there are, that's okay. We'll just figure that out and add those in to get our total cost. Are there any questions about this before I have you try one? Outstanding. Okay, here goes. Pajan leases a car by paying $3,000 up front and $299 a month for three years. The lease states that mileage above 36,000 will be charged at 25 cents per mile. If he drives 38,600 miles, what is the total cost of this lease? Make sure you figure in all those components. I'll set up a poll for this one and give you a chance to try it. This is definitely the kind of question you could expect to see on a homework or a quiz or an exam. So if you're able to solve it now, you can feel pretty good about where you are relative to these types of questions. There's a lot of pieces here, so you have to be patient with yourself and be careful as you go through it. You want to make sure that you're using all of the components and you're being careful with your calculations. We don't have to be in a hurry at all today, so I'll give you plenty of time to work on it. Let's go another 40 seconds and then we'll do it together. I do encourage you to, uh, to, to do these so that you get a sense. Yep, I totally know how to do it. When I'm asked to do one of these in homework or a quiz, I'm confident. Um, watching it is great. Doing it is way better.
All right, let's see where we are on this one. All right, unanimous, outstanding, very good. I mentioned that today's uh, content that students tend to do really well on, it looks like we're headed down that road. That's awesome. Okay, so starting out with Hey John leases a car by paying $3,000 up front, $2.99 a month for three years. Mileage above $36,000 will be $0.25 cents per mile. What's the total cost? So to find the total cost of this lease, we're going to configure, we're going to consider all four components. Up front, monthly, the length of the lease, and any additional costs. We read back through the question and we see that he paid $3,000 up front, $2.99 a month for three years. And now we're kind of comfortable enough with this to know that three years is good, but what we really care about is how many months this is, and so that's going to be 36 months. And then the additional charges here, well, he was supposed to drive 36,000, but he drove 38,600. So we're going to have to subtract to find out how many miles he's going to have to pay for. And let's see. 38,600 minus 36,000 is 2,600 miles that he's going to have to pay for. We're told those are going to cost 25 cents per mile, so we'll multiply by 25 cents. Be careful there. Make sure you don't do dollars. And see that that's going to be an extra $650 that he's going to have to pay above his upfront cost and his monthly payment. Now we'll put all this together. And the total cost will be the $3,000 up front plus $2.99 a month for 36 months plus the $6.50 in additional charges. Order of operations tells us we need to multiply $2.99 times 36. That gives us 10764 And now we add them all together. Plus 650 plus 3,000. And we end up with a total cost of this lease as $14,414 for the use of that car for three years. Based on the poll results, I feel really good about where you are with regard to leases. If anybody has any questions, though, uh, let me know. We're going to move on from leases here in just a second. Okay, terrific. We are gonna cover mortgages today, but before we get there, um, there are two different housing recommendations. Um, these come from uh, a combination of government agencies and the financial industry to sort of just help people make wise decisions about how much they're gonna spend on their monthly housing. This first one is on page 166. Um, it's housing recommendation number one. Oh, I guess it says it right here, doesn't it? Um, and what it says is, um, the amount that a family should devote to monthly housing expenses should not exceed 30% of their monthly gross income. Gross is what you make before taxes. It's just how much total did you bring in? It doesn't include, um, any taxes that are withdrawn. So monthly gross income should not exceed 30% for monthly housing. So this is about monthly gross and monthly housing. I'm gonna write that right here. This is about monthly income and monthly housing. Looking at the problem down below there, a family has a monthly gross income of $8,400. According to this recommendation, how much should be spent monthly on housing? Okay, well, we should not exceed 30% of their monthly gross on housing. So this kind of goes back to the beginning of this chapter, really. And the question we're really being asked here is, what is 30% 
of 8,400. Because their monthly expenses on housing should not exceed 30% of their monthly gross income. We know their monthly gross income. We're being asked, how much are they going to spend monthly on housing? So really, what is 30% of 8,400 is our question here. And so we'll have what is 30% of 8,400? And all we need to do to find that out is multiply those together. And it's $2,520. That's the type of question you can expect to see about a housing recommendation like this one. A key here is that housing recommendation number one is about monthly income and monthly housing. I don't think you'll have trouble with the calculation there. Um, distinguishing between recommendation one and recommendation two that we're about to look at next is, is the, the, the part that might be sticky for you. And I'm going to do my best to help you with that. Are there any questions on what we did here, though, before we go forward and look at recommendation number two? Excellent. Recommendation number two. This one's on page 172 of your book, and what it says is, the amount of a mortgage loan should not exceed three times a family's annual gross income. It's important to note how this one is different from recommendation one. Recommendation one was about monthly housing and monthly income. This one is about the amount of loan and the annual income. So recommendation two is about the amount of the loan and the annual income. I don't think you'll have trouble with the calculations involved with these two recommendations. It's just making sure you recognize that the problem you're working on is about recommendation one, monthly housing, monthly income, or recommendation two, which is the amount they can borrow and their annual income. A problem related to recommendation two would be a family has a monthly gross income of $8,400. According to this recommendation, what, of amount, what amount of a home loan could they afford? So the clue here in this question that this one must be about recommendation two is the question itself. What amount of a home loan could they afford? Last time we were given monthly income and asked about monthly housing. This time we were given monthly income, but we were asked about the loan they can afford. The fact that this is about the loan tells us it's about recommendation two, and that this idea right here is what's gonna drive us to answer the question. Of course, here it says, the amount of mortgage loan should not exceed three times the family's annual gross income. I wasn't given the annual income. I was given their monthly gross income. What am I gonna do to this monthly gross income to find out their annual gross income? If I know how much they make each month, what do I need to do to that to figure out how, how much they make in a year? Perfect, Kevin, Ashley, that's exactly it. So we'll take that 8,400 and we'll multiply by 12 to get their annual income. And that's $100,800. Now we haven't answered the question yet. All we've done is figured out their annual income. And according to this recommendation, well, according to the question, what amount of a loan can they afford is what we're after here. And according to this recommendation, the amount of the loan should not exceed three times the annual income. So we'll take that annual income, we'll multiply it by three, and find out that $302,400 is the recommendation of the amount of a home loan that this family could afford.
So to review those two recommendations, recommendation one is about monthly income and monthly housing. If we know how much a family makes in a month, we multiply by 30% to find out what they could spend on housing in a month. Recommendation two is about how much could they borrow compared to what they earn in a year. We may not be given what they earn in a year, but if we're given the monthly gross, we can find the annual income by multiplying by 12. So now we have that annual income and we just need to multiply that by three to find out the amount of a loan that they should max out at. Are there any questions on those two housing recommendations and being able to answer questions related to those two? The questions you might see are exactly the type of questions that we worked on here. Okay, outstanding. We're just breezing through this. Okay, now let's talk mortgages a little bit. Um, when you take on a mortgage, you're buying a house and there's a loan payment that has to go to the bank to pay back the principal that you borrowed plus the interest that they're gonna assess on that loan. So what you're paying back to the bank is principal plus interest. There are co other components to a house payment that we're gonna look at in a little while. But for right now, we are just looking at paying back to the bank the principal plus the interest on the loan. And in our book on page 167, you'll see an amortization table. It'll be important for solving questions in this section. And uh, we're gonna look at that uh, right away to kind of see how that table works. So here's what a amortization table looks like. And what's going on here is this. What we've got is in the left-hand column, we have interest rate. They go from four and a half up to 7.75 in this particular table. And over here we have, how long is the loan? Is it 15 years? Is it 20 years? Is it 30 years? Sort of your standard mortgage is a 30 year loan, but you can go shorter if you want to. Um, your payment will be higher, but you'll pay off the loan sooner. So there are advantages to having a shorter loan period. Um, and then what you'll see is all these numbers in here in this chart. And what those do is there is a multiplier that goes with every one of these, depending on what your interest rate is and the number of years, there's a multiplier in there that we're gonna use to figure out how much has to be paid each month for principal plus interest. A really, really important part of this table is the idea right here where it says monthly mortgage payment per $1,000. So what this is, is for every $1,000 you borrow, that's what this number is about. For every thousand you borrow. Let's talk about how that factors into answering a question like the one at the top of the page here. Find the payment for principal and interest for a $155,000 loan at 6.25% for 20 years. First thing is we've got to make sure we're comfortable reading the table. And if you see something here that doesn't make sense, make sure you let me know. But we have a 6.25% interest rate, so we find that. And it's a 20-year loan, so we go over here to the 20-year column. We find where those two things come together, which is here at this 7.3093. So that number is going to be important for us, that 7.3093. What that is, is that's how much we would have to pay back if we had borrowed $1,000. Now, we borrowed a lot more than that, but if I was paying back $1,000, that's how much I'd pay $7.31 every month to pay it off. But we didn't borrow $1,000. Instead, we borrowed $155,000. The key to the payment per 1,000 is this. When we go to multiply this by the amount we borrowed, we don't use the entire 
thousand. We multiply it by 155. And it's because the thousand is already built into the table. So we don't multiply by 155,000. We just multiply by 155. Two ways to look at that. The thousand is already built in the table, or this is our payment per thousand. We borrowed 155 thousands. So we need to multiply by 155 because that's how many thousands we borrowed, 155 of them. If you were to make a mistake in a question like this, it would be right here, multiplying by 155,000. Be careful not to. Just remember, the thousand is already built into the table. So what would the payment be for principal plus interest for a $155,000 loan at 6.25 for 20 years? We find our 6.25%, we find our 20 years, where do those come together? That gives us this number here. We multiply by the number of thousands we borrowed, which is 155. So we just multiply those two things together. 7.3093 times 155, oops. 7.3093 times 155, and I get 1132.9415. This question involves money. So we're going to round to the nearest cent, which is the nearest hundredth. I'll round, that's four or lower. So we'll round this down to 1132.94. So $155,000 loan at 6.25% for 20 years. The payment for principal and interest would be $1,132.94. Making sure you can read that table and use it correctly is really important. Um, let me know if you have questions on what we just did there before I have you try one. Outstanding, here it goes. Find the payment for principal and interest for a $171,000 loan at 5.25% for 15 years. So I'll set up a poll for this one, take a minute, find the payment for principal and interest for that particular loan. And I will tell you, this is on page um, where it go, minute, 167 of your book. It'll be a valuable table to use. You'll also see some questions where you use an online mortgage calculator. And I think the online mortgage calculator is a great tool. But for you on exams, you won't be able to go online. So questions on exams will look like this. So questions on quizzes will look like this. I definitely want you to be aware of the online mortgage calculator because that's something that you might um, find useful at times. But as far as you know, our nuts and bolts of being able to find the numbers, um, a table like this is a great way for us to do it. We'll go another 30 seconds and then we'll talk about it.
All right, let's take a look. Unanimous again, outstanding. Very good, very good. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take a look. If anybody has questions, make sure you ask them. But what's going on here is this. We're looking for principal plus interest. That comes from the table. 5.25% is here. 15 years is here. So we look at where those come together, and that's this 8.0388. That's what we have to pay per thousand. So for every thousand we've borrowed, we've got to pay that much, and we borrowed 171,000. So we'll multiply by 171, and we'll have 8.0388 times 171. We get 1374-6348. This is a question about money. So we're going to round to the nearest cent, which is the nearest hundredth. I'll look one space to the right. That's four or lower. So we'll round down to 1374-63. And that's going to be our monthly payment for principal plus interest. Let me know if you have questions on that. Uh, again, the poll went fantastic. We'll go ahead and move forward, and we're going to add in a couple of other pieces of a mortgage payment. PITI is something that you might encounter when you go through the process of buying a house. PITI. What that stands for is this first P and I right here, that's principal plus interest. That's what we've been doing so far. This T is for taxes, and the I is for insurance. So we're gonna look at all four of those components of a mortgage payment when we look at the entire monthly payment. Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. There's also um, something called PMI, which is uh, mortgage insurance, but not everybody has to pay that, so we're not gonna incorporate that in our calculation. Um, principal and interest, taxes and insurance. Those will be the components we're going to look at for the entire monthly payment. Our question here says, find the entire monthly payment for a $210,000 loan at 4.75% for 30 years. The annual real estate taxes are $4,800. Homeowner's insurance costs $660 per year. And so we're going to look at each of those components. We're going to have Principal plus interest, that's what we found using the table. That's what we've done in the last couple of problems we looked at. And then we're going to have to look at taxes, that's new. And we're going to have to look at insurance, that's new. So for principal plus interest here, let's see, as I look through this problem, I can see that it's a $210,000 loan at 4.75% for 30 years. So $210,000 loan at 4.75% for 30 years. We'll go back to our table. That'll help us figure this one out. Just have to remember 4.75% in 30 years. So we'll go back and we'll have, let's see, there's 4.75% 30 years. So the number that we're looking at is 5.2165. Let me know if you aren't sure where that number came from or how we got it, but it's 5.2165. So we'll take that 5.2165 and we'll multiply it by how many thousands did we borrow? Well, we borrowed 210 thousands. And so for principal and interest, 5.2165 times 210 is 1095.465. We won't do any rounding till we get to the very end, so we'll keep all of that for now. Up next, we've got to do taxes. I'm told my annual real estate taxes are $4,800. Well, it's certainly not going to be $4,800 every month. That's our annual real estate taxes. We're looking for a monthly payment. So what do I need to do if I know my annual over the course of the whole year taxes and I want to know how much do I have to pay each month? What do I need to do with this 4,800? What do I do to it? All 
Perfect. Ashley, Kibram, you're exactly right. We'll divide that by 12 to figure out how much we pay each month. And so that's 4,800 divided by 12 is $400 every month. The last piece of this that we need to calculate is the insurance. We're told that insurance costs 660 per year. So that 660, we're gonna do the same thing we did with taxes. We're gonna divide by 12 to figure out how much we pay each month. And that looks like $55 each month. Finally, the last thing we need to do here is get our entire monthly payment, and we're gonna get that by adding up those three numbers. The 1,095.465 plus 400 plus 55, and I get 1,550.465, but this is about money, so we're going to round to the nearest cent. We're going to round to the nearest hundredth. I'll look one space to the right. That's five or bigger. So $1,550.47 would be our entire monthly payment. 1,095.47 goes to the bank. 400 goes to the county. 55 goes to the insurance company. Altogether, $1,550.47. Does anybody have questions about what we did there before I have you try one? Outstanding. This is kind of the top of the mountain for us today, this entire monthly payment where we've got to do principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Okay, here goes. Find the entire monthly payment for the following. The loan is $163,000 at 5% for 15 years. The annual taxes are $2,820 and insurance is $564 per year. And what you're after is the entire monthly payment. I'm gonna set up a poll for this. I know you might not have your book handy, so you might need to see that table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it here for you know enough time for you to kind of jot down the components of the question. Then I'll go back to the page with the table on it so you can see that. And then we'll come back here when we're gonna answer the question. But first I'll, I'll stick around here for, for a little bit before I, before I set the poll up because I wanna make sure that you have all the information you need. Then I'll go back to the slide with the chart and then we'll come back here when we talk about it. But it's $163,000 at 5% for 15 years. Taxes are $2,820, and the insurance is $564 per year. Great question, Kevin. No, you won't. This chart will be given to you on quizzes and exams. So if you need this chart in a question on an exam, it'll be given to you. Excellent question. Um, I'll go back. Here we go. So $163,000 at 5% for 15 years. Taxes are 2,820 and insurance is 564. All right, now we'll go back and I'll set up the poll. Hopefully got everything you need. I don't think I can change the, the page that I'm on without goofing up the poll. So I'll leave it here. Um, if you uh, need those numbers, you can let me know. 
take your time on this. Like I said, this is kind of the top of the mountain for us today. You can let me know if you need more time. I think we'll go maybe another um, 45 seconds and then talk to it. All right, let's see where we are on this one. Wow, you're unanimous again. What a fantastic day for polling. Okay, um, it's not a bad thing if we don't have unanimous agreement, but when we do and it's consistent, that's a really good indicator. All right, so we'll go back and look at our question here. Find the entire monthly payment for the following. So the things we need to make sure we include are principal plus interest, taxes, and insurance. Our principal plus interest is going to be based on these numbers right here, 163,000, 5% for 15 years. So I have to remember that 5% for 15 years when we go back. 5%, 15 years, those two come together at this 7.9079. 7.9079. Seven point nine zero seven nine. We need to multiply that by however many thousands we borrowed. That's one hundred sixty-three thousands that got borrowed. So we'll multiply those together. Seven point nine zero seven nine times one sixty-three is twelve eighty-eight point nine eight seven seven. I'd really like to go ahead and round, but I'm going to wait till the very end to do any rounding in case there's decimals all over the place. All right, so next we'll look at taxes. Our taxes were 2820 annually. So that's for the whole year. So we're gonna take that 2820 and divide by 12 and get $235 every month in taxes. And then we also have to factor in insurance, which is 564 per year. Since we're looking for the monthly payment, we'll divide that by 12. And it's $47 a month for insurance. Finally, in order to get our entire monthly payment, we are going to add these three components together. And 
when we do that, we get $1,570.9877. This is about money, so we're gonna round to the nearest cent. We look one space to the right, that's five or bigger. So $1,570.99 will be our entire monthly payment.